Well, uh, the lower house approved an amendment of increasing the IEC Information Education Communications for the Renewable Energy uh, Bureau of the Department of Energy so that more people would be aware of the importance of renewable energy and at the same time for energy efficiency. And we were just discussing it could be in the forms of books for schools, it could be uh, a website that's interactive, it could be uh, even a film or a TV show uh, in very understandable, simple terms or just handouts to everyone uh, because we see last summer while no emergency power was granted uh, to the president but still there were no brownouts because there was a very active uh, energy conservation. In short, pag tayo ay magtitipid dahil sa energy efficiency, we were able to save 150 megawatts of electricity. So, on the demand side tayo na consumers, we should be more efficient and we should conserve energy so that the uh, uh, we, we, we don't uh, need to build more uh, coal plants, for example. So the 150 megawatts saved during the hot summer months is a product of a very active energy efficiency company. You were drafting CSP as one of the policy options for the budget. But the questions being against the policy now. Are you still the competitive selection? Ah, competitive selection. During the power trends. Yes. What are the questions being thrown? What are the questions being thrown? Uh, I think that uh, former Secretary Petilia has issued already a circular or a guideline uh, for one of that is the competitive selection, huh? so that um, uh, this can be resolved. Now, as to the questions being thrown of that. In every new innovative solution, uh, there will always be critics, and uh, but that can be worked out. Uh, let the DOE defend its position on the competitive selection, but that's a must because we must level the playing field. We must. Uh, we're not saying everything will come from RE, but we must level the playing field, and there must be competitive selection so that um, everyone is given an opportunity. It should be an opportunity for all. Not just selected. Well, what is your stand on I'm not too familiar with nuclear, although it is clean energy, but because of safety standards, and sometimes, generally speaking, we Filipinos are not always safety conscious, um, I would have my reservations. Um, I was speaking to the energy minister of uh, the deputy of the U.S. and the energy minister of China is here as well. And in fact, uh, the U.S. commended the Chinese uh, commitment of 20% uh, cut from 205 levels. And that's good for a major emitter like China and a major emitter like the United States going beyond 20% cut in their greenhouse gas emissions from 205 levels is actually good. If they could increase it, so much the better. Uh, I am not from the government of China and I am not from the U.S. government. It is not for me to say I am a Philippine lawmaker, but from what I hear and from my information that I gather, uh, both the United States and China will be able to deliver their commitments towards reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. And from my understanding, China will be 20%, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, the U.S. will be 26%. But I am not very sure uh, what is contained in their INP submissions. But definitely, it cannot be business as usual. It cannot be energy as usual. We must use technological innovations to be able to push renewable energy forward so that we do not rely only on fossil fuels, including the very harmful coal. How will we climate proof our energy infrastructure without rates going up? When you introduce it, most likely, most of it goes up. Well, 
Uh, first, perhaps uh, investments in terms of technical assistance and grants from uh, bigger nations. Uh, second, uh, public-private partnerships. We we'll see how it's possible. Third, perhaps government um, allocation or subsidy for uh, climate proofing energy infrastructure that will not be carried on or passed on to the consumer. Oh, another, another interesting uh, area which has not been discussed is in spot areas, uh, in off-grid areas. We, we subsidize it, right? And they use very expensive diesel which is malayo pang pinanggalingan at mahalang diesel, minsan 22 pesos ang diesel dyan. But if you have a hybrid and combine uh, hydro, if there's a source, and solar, if uh, may, may lupa, may lugar, and part of it lang is diesel, bababa ang source ng energy mix and the universal charge being charged to consumers, alienate them. You understand? Because if the source of power of those in the off-grid areas uh, because well of transmission lines in the spog areas are diesel mahal ang subsidy na binabayad natin pero kung bababa yun at i-approve ng DOE and ERC bababa din ang universal charge natin at bababa ang kuryente natin What's your stance at the heat subsidies for intermittent arguments like heat and solar? I know that your stance is in the solar sector yes. and is advocating for not <laughs> My son is not in favor of it. Did he say no, that? Uh, he's saying that eventually he's going to advocate something that we can have the subsidies. Really? Yeah, just telling us that. For a businessman to say that he is not for fiddle tariff subsidy? Eventually. Well, we know that we're on the second field already, you know. Uh, first of all, my son speaks for himself, and he's a solar entrepreneur. He's very visionary, and he's a businessman. Okay, so you know my son better than me because you said that he said that. I do not know that, no? Okay, what is your name? What's your stand What is your name? What's your stand okay. ending subsidies? Okay, good question. We finished the first subsidy. It's, it's not a subsidy, it's a... Well, okay, that's feed and tariff uh, 968 for solar is done. We have the 869 till March. Um, my position is we can continue uh, based on a rate that is agreeable for all. Technically a compromise rate, perhaps not 869, but to be able to draw more investments into renewables, not just solar, but even wind and hydro and biomass, we must continue the feed-in tariff, which is allowed based on the renewable energy law. So at the same time, it should not negatively impact on the rates of the consumers. I hope. It's not for me to say. It is for the DOE to recommend to the ERC, and it's for the ERC to approve. Yes. Yeah, ako yung lawmaker. I'm, I'm in favor because it's part of the RD law, the Baron Feed and Tariff. So there must be a reason why we put it there. And I know I'm okay for a third round of the fit. But because I think it will attract more investors, both foreign and domestic. But if the entrepreneurs say they can survive without the Feed and Tariff, let's see. But maybe not as many brave investors will come in without the Feed and Tariff, right? So I'm still for another round of fit. Because we must encourage interventions that will uh, double or even triple uh, the exposure in renewables. Because there are 21 new coal plants that were um, approved by DOE and uh, approved by the ECCs. Uh, the ECCs were given by the DNR in the past month because of the need for energy. So we must balance this by pushing renewables more so that their energy mix is ideal. We have uh, 30, 30, 30, renewables and fossil fuels, etc. Thank you.